Terrell Thomas joining and Sam and Greg, Sports Radio 929 the game, 929 the game.com. Terrell, how are you? Good morning, gentlemen. I'm great. How you doing today? Doing fine. Doing Fantastic. fine, man. Fantastic. So, what should we think uh, as we watch this Hawks team? Uh, they've been, you know, winning streak a while back, and then it's kind of been back and forth. They're coming off a three-game losing streak. They uh, they take it to the Bulls. But, as again, yesterday Sam and I were talking about the fact that it's really kind of hard to gauge what we're looking at because as people come back from injury being dinged up, it's now that we start seeing teams at full capacity. LeBron's back. Other players are coming back, joining the Nets and things like that. So what do you make of this team right now? I have to say, uh, you know, it was a tough week, as you just mentioned. So uh, I am glad that they were able to bounce back and, and get back on the winning side of things last night. Right now, looking at this team, I think I think you kind of hit it right on the head. It, it is a great turning point. The, the guys are getting healthy. We've got about seven or eight games left in, in the season. So I, I think they're right where they need to be as we get ready to go into the playoffs. Um, I, I, I guess the, the only caution I would have would be something that we talked about all season long, the injuries. Yeah, Terrell, I'm looking at something from last night's game in the box score. Not one, but two players with double-doubles. Not saying we can get that every night, but that was nice to get last night. Yes, indeed. I I, I, I think for sure um, when we see progression and when we see multiple Hawks, I think we've gotten so accustomed to just seeing Trey Young and relying so much on Trey Young. Uh, but, but having a force like Clint Capella, uh, having John Collins step up when he's able to, having Bogey go on those scoring stretches, uh, it, it, it's been phenomenal to see, and, and it has taken a burden away from Trey. Now, of course, we saw earlier this week uh, Trey is still he's still the focal guy. He's still very important to how everything moves. But having other people on that team who can be productive and, and make big plays when necessary has been key all season. Is Clint the? Uh, is he going to have to be that next go-to person when we get to the playoffs? Because Trey can't do it all. It, it, we know when you get to the playoffs, you've got to have, you know, a, a running mate, if not two others. And what we're seeing, and we're talking about Capella, you know, twenty points last night, eleven rebounds. But moving into the playoffs, are you confident that these guys can change and tweak their roles a little bit? So there is when focus is all on Trey that they're able to step up and 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 be that force, especially in the middle. Yeah, I actually am, to be quite honest with you. And, and a gentleman who I'll be looking to see what he does, uh, someone who mentioned a moment ago, is Bogey. I, I, I do believe Clint will be a factor in the playoffs. However, I think his, his I think he'll be more of an impact defensively in a, what, 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 what we've seen him do so much this year. But I think scoring-wise, it'll be someone like a Bogey. I think, I think uh, we'll really see his value uh, if, 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 uh, if he's productive during the postseason. We're spending time on the com hotline with Terrell Thomas. He is social. You can follow him on Twitter at Eldorado2452. Eldorado2452. We've had a Chris Dunn sighting this week. We've been waiting all season for this. Talk about potentially what that does because you talk about scoring, but defense is very important when you get to the playoffs. It's important all the time. And we know that he's a defensive specialist. Talk about having him get back uh, healthy enough to get back on the floor. Man, that is a big move for the Hawks. And as we've been talking about the postseason this morning, I think he came back right on time because his defensive presence is the reason I believe Travis brought him on the team. They really didn't need another scoring guard or another scoring wing. However, when you have somebody like Trey Young, of course, now having Lou Williams, you have guards on your team who may not be known for defense, and you can throw a guy out there, and I don't want to disrespect him, but a guy who's a, he's a dog on defense. You can throw a dog out there in the postseason who can, you know, defend a gentleman like Kyrie Irving if necessary, defend a gentleman like Jason Tatum if necessary. I think Chris Dunn, we've waited all year, like you just said. And some Hawks fans were getting a little upset. Uh, they were getting a little ruthless. They wanted to see him out on the court. Um, but I think once we really get into that postseason vibe, and especially if we end up taking on the team like the Knicks in the first round for Derrick Rose and Emmanuel quickly, I think uh, us being able to see just how good and how much of an impact Chris Dunn can have defensively just could be phenomenal for this Hawks team. Hey, you know, you brought up the Knicks. What are your thoughts on these guys this year? I, I, I have to tip my cap to the Knicks. I've been very, very impressed. 
Um, I've always had a lot of respect for Tom Thibodeau. I think he's a, a wonderful coach, not just a defensive-minded coach, but I think he gets the best out of his players. I think it was unfortunate, you know, some of the rumors and things that were coming up when he was in uh, Minnesota just about how much he was working his players. I'm glad he was able to get another opportunity. And, and uh, Julius Randle, a gentleman who for, for some years we've heard that he has the talent to be a franchise player, be an all-star you know, it was a lot about him coming out of Kentucky when he initially went to the Lakers. I'm glad that he's finally found his niche and been able to find some success. I don't really fear them. I definitely still think our Hawks have more firepower than they have. Um, and when I, when I look at playoff experience on both teams, it kind of seems even from that perspective as well. But once again, got to tip my hat to the Knicks and everything they're doing. Because uh, I do believe it's true that when the Knicks are good, basketball is better. See, you know, and it's funny that you say that because I think that Tibbs falls into a category like a lot of coaches, a lot of great coaches too, that their voice to the team has a shelf life. Well, I mean, he can turn them around. I mean, he's go back to even Billy Martin, Tom Coughlin, these these coaches that have a certain way of getting to the players, but that voice after a little while just sort of falls on dead ears. And I'm wondering if that's going to be the case. And hopefully, he's learned that from the past. You brought up what happened in Minnesota. Like I said, I go back to him when he when he got uh, there in Chicago. I don't know if you feel that same way, but I wonder if you can see the difference in his coaching style now that he's landed in New York as opposed to his other stops. I do believe he, he seems, uh, it, it, this may seem funny, he seems to smile a lot more. I, I think he used to have that, uh, yeah. he, he seems to always be such an uh, upset guy or someone you know, you'd be intimidated to talk to. So I, I would agree with you what you said. It does seem like he's changed his style. He's realized he's coaching younger players. He has to be a little bit more in tune with what they have going on in their lives and not be as strict as he's trying to get his message across. And I think we've seen that in the results uh, for the Knicks this season. Spending time on the wait. To clear it up, spending time on the wait for dot com outline with Terrell Thomas talking Hawks um, and NBA. And the Hawks have a couple of interesting matchups coming up this week. Uh, teams they won't have to worry about facing in the Eastern Division, but still uh, interesting teams, challenging teams with some bright stars. You got Portland coming in, and then this Phoenix team. We saw this start back in the bubble last year when Phoenix it was just a dynamic presence down there and looked like they were going to be great, you know, going forward from the future. They've had Chris Paul, and they're, they're pretty remarkable. Talk about these next two matchups that the Hawks have. Yeah, uh, I, the schedule guys may have done a, the Hawks a favor with these two matchups. As you mentioned, they will be kind of marquee matchups. And this is honestly – with us having about seven to eight games left, this is my personal opinion, I feel like the Hawks should kind of be shifting gears now and playing playoff basketball. They should be kind of mentally preparing themselves for what playoff basketball will be like when they'll be playing these elite teams, when they'll be playing great players. So having uh, games where you have to face a Damian Lillard, who could possibly be in the MVP discussion, definitely one of the top players in the league, and then Chris Paul, <laughs> what more can you say about this man, his leadership, and, and how he has continued to help the Phoenix Suns grow. Now, I don't want to take away anything from the Suns because, as you mentioned, they were, we saw this in a bubble. So before Chris Paul even arrived on their roster, we kind of saw that the Suns were turning the corner. Uh, we saw that Monty Williams was getting them to play the type of basketball in which he wanted them to play. And the addition of Chris Paul, uh, Chris Paul excuse me, just added to that. It kind of added uh, you know, flames to the fire, if, if that makes sense. So I think that this would be two great tests for the Hawks. I, I wanted to see what they could do against the Sixers. Unfortunately, you know, they were undermanned and were suffering from a lot of injuries. With some of those players back, uh, I just hope that the Hawks kind of move into that playoff mentality with, with none of them really having experience, like stop playing, get serious, and, you know, get, get, get done what needs to be done so that they can possibly <laughs> compete for a championship. Make me feel good about Chris Paul in the playoffs because, see, that's the conversation. He's great regular season. He's an all-time great as far as a leader. But why hasn't he been able to bring a team deep into the playoffs and into the championship? You know, that, that <laughs> that's a great question, and that's something that I, I've never uh, really understood. Um, I, I've always had a respect for Chris Paul and how he controls the floor. Um, he, he is one of those point guards who looks like he looks like a quarterback out there. He's, 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 man, he's manning everything. He's calling the audibles when they, need to be, when they need to be called. But as you mentioned, when the game slows down, it seems like his game is not as impactful. 
Um, now maybe this year, um, having a scorer like a Devin Booker, I'm not. I don't think he's ever played with a, a talent, a talented scorer like Booker. He's played with some talented players. Of course, James Hart is a great scorer, but he he's more of a one on one player than Booker. Of course. Um, so I, I think this will be the first time in which Chris Paul actually has a running mate in which he can make some noise with. But I I, I, I don't have the answers to that. You know, I, I really don't know because that's something I've, that's kind of disappointed me throughout the years. For him to have such a high stature, high basketball IQ, as you mentioned, no success in the playoffs doesn't make sense. Watch for things, folks. We're spending some time on the WaitForIt.com hotline, but to wrap things up with Terrell Thomas, uh, Nate McMillan, just what, what, what kind of marks are you giving him right now for what he's been able to do with this team, taking the helm of it, turning things around, and keeping them focused? What's that extra little thing that he's saying or doing uh, for this team that night after night? Well, if, if I'm Travis Slate, uh, you know, I've already drawn up the contract, and I just want to know, you know, how much money do we need to fill in these particular slots to keep Coach McMillan here? Because the, the way that he has these young men playing basketball right now, um, whether he's pretty much changed the basketball culture here in Atlanta in a matter of months or a matter of weeks, it has been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, I think the fact, quite honestly, that Coach McMillan has played in the NBA, I think the, the fact, of course, that he's had decades already as a head coach, he, he knows what to say. He knows what he may have wanted to hear. Uh, he also, of course, was a point guard. So he knows how to – he knows where everyone should be. He knows how to address everyone and get the best out of them from what I've seen so far. Um, so I, I really think that's what it is. I think, I think communication in the locker room changed um, when the coaching change happened. I think, once again, Coach Lee was also able to kind of, you know, sit back for a moment when uh, he was the assistant coach and just see how guys were picking up, you know, what Coach Pierce may have said about this or what the other assistant coaches may have said. So he was already able to kind of find uh, what works for the guys, the build a rapport with the guys. So when he was shifted into the lead man position, I think some of the players won, like I said, with us having a younger team, they were really, I don't want to use the word anxious, but they, they listening to someone who has done it before, and this is no disrespect or no slight to Coach Pierce because I thought he was doing a great job of what he was giving. But when you have someone who's actually been there before, has done it before, it may be a little bit easier to listen to them. Uh, they may understand your journey a little bit different. So I think that's really the, the difference between what was happening with our Hawks and what's going on with our Hawks right now. Coach McMillan knows how to talk to them. He has their voice. He has their ear, excuse me, and they're listening to him. Terrell, we can't thank you enough for coming on and, uh, and joining us at this time every week. And also, I want to thank you for your flexibility. So, uh, listen, man, enjoy the oh, rest. Man. Of- thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I guess uh, thank you for the knowledge. Terrell Thomas joining Sam and Greg here. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game, 92.9 game.com And we are going to talk, well, recap what we saw yesterday in the Derby.